From today's show, let it be that your mom is all the way down. (laughs) (laughs) Number one priority of Jason Ellis show, episode 14 or something. Your mom's a whore. Is it already 14? I don't know. Uh, No, 15 came out uh, earlier. Oh, come on. Oh, I wanted past 15. Oh, man. I wanted to do the 15th episode pay per view. Oh, man. We blew it. That would have been huge. We we didn't get to do our 15th anniversary show, so I thought we could do 15th Mm. episode instead. (sighs) Fuck! Hey, you just remind me of that huge shafting. We got to do it. Yeah, we yeah. got to do that. Right? Yeah, we got to do it. You know, I had uh, a very exciting phone call with the Virgin Hotel last night. Oh yeah! Oh, Elismania is going to be back, baby. They're in. Pretty sure. Yeah. Fuck they're yeah. very interested in um, the Lewis fight, and they're very interested in uh, us doing a show at the fights instead of being told that we're not allowed to do both because of this radio people that we used to work with i told him i was like we can do the show live while the fights are happening uh tony hawk and i have a show we can do that there nobody can stop us from doing anything and i can do stunts we can do a stunt the day before all kinds of stuff and they're like man we really need some some people so let's uh let's talk next week and in and figure it out. So wow. it seems like after after September is when they're looking for uh, from September on is when they're looking to get us out there. So got to talk to everybody, make sure everybody knows what they want to do and can they do it and blah 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 blah. And if that if it all lines up, that's we're going back in a, in a big fucking way too. It'll be like a big fuck you to everybody else that thought it was over. It's it'll be back in in tenfold. That's well, exciting, amazing, and a little bit surprising, which is great. Why is it surprising? If you had, they'd be over it. If you no, uh, just if you had told me in November of last year that there wasn't going to be ever ever going to be another Ellis Mania like there had been in the past, I would say yeah, okay, I could see that. Yeah, it wouldn't have been the most shocking news you, if you had had a crystal ball and had told me that. That wouldn't have been the most shocking piece of information you could have shared with me for the was, future. I was telling Katie there was a couple of Ellis Manias there where they were doing well and they paid me a lot of money and I was contemplating not doing it regardless of everybody coming. I was having a bad time. Yeah. I was like, I don't really like... I, I mean, when you add up how much money and how much drama, it, I was, it wasn't worth it to me. I was like, wow, this is like really stressful. It always turns out where you know people part ways and... And never speak again. And I'm like, there's so many fights that have happened around this event that it's like anxiety builds when it's approaching to me. Because I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, what's going to happen now? Somebody's got to, fan's going to bum me out. Someone, you know, someone's going to act like something that where where I'll be like, wow, really, dude? I'm going to do all this and you're going to do that? And it, it, but it, yeah, the way I looked at it was completely different. And then, like you said, you wouldn't be surprised if it didn't happen again. Me too. I was like, well... You know what sucks is I didn't sit back a couple times, or I did a couple times, but not as much as I should have gone. Fuck, dude! Really, look at that. That's crazy. Have some fun. Don't worry so much about um, all the small shit. Which is what I was gonna say. I haven't even told you guys. I, uh, you know, I did the the EKG and the heart monitor, and then I had MRI on my heart, and you know, I'm seeing. I've been put through a one specialist onto another specialist. And I've been panicking and, you know, I know the, you know, the job moving to this podcast world was, was a stress. Is that my iPad? Might've been. It's, I didn't know I got emails from my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to edit that out. I feel like that's fucking, what the fuck just happened? It was from me. 
You've got me. <laughs> oh, you're hitting on me? <laughs> man, you sent me some weird shit right before my singing lesson that actually kind of helped me because, man, my singing lesson got embarrassing quick. I'm like, man. And then she told me it's recording. She'll send it to me. I got to get back to my death story. Jason, when you have debt, are you interested in paying it off? Wait. Yes. <laughs> Man, that uh -huh. came out of nowhere, Michael. Uh -huh. If I'm in debt, yeah. What was it? Do I want to get out of it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. What, I hate debt, Michael. What would you be looking for? High interest rates or low interest rates? Wait, if it's low interest rates, yeah, would that less. not make it easier for me? <laughs> I imagine it would. Well, then I'm going to opt for low interest rates. Yeah. Why do you ask, Michael? Do you want the hard way to get a loan, and do you want to have to actually physically drive down to some office to wait your turn to talk to some loan officer? Or would you prefer if, be, if it was fast and easy and all online? Well, look, I like hard stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I like to take I've it. heard that about you. I <laughs> 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 I'm into real big hard stuff, mm -hmm. but when it comes to debt, yeah. I'd like it to be easier to get out of it. Well, then find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Ellis. That's upstart.com slash Ellis. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Ellis. Hey, everybody. Jason Ellis here talking about Manscaped. Just recently, I decided that I wanted some hair on my arms because I usually shave my arms and my fingers. This is who you're dealing with. And I decided that um, I want a little bit of hair on my forearms. So I'm allowing some to come back while keeping everything else trim uh, with my Manscaped tools. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty happy with, um, with my vibes. It's just a lot... Fluffing on the forearm. I have it never seemed, met it, bal it balances in the moonlight. Sorry, Michael. I have never met anybody who is more committed to manscaping than you, unless it is manscaped. Right. Those guys are probably pretty into it, I would imagine. And they are into everything involving your balls. That is I why. like balls too, Michael. Small <laughs> world, right? I've heard that about you. Yeah, people. Yep, there you go. That is why Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Check your balls. At least I've once had a month. my balls checked. I've heard I that about you. No, I'm probably <laughs> by a doctor as well. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code Ellis at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code Ellis at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. So all the time, you know, I, mean, I, I, try, I try to help people because I'm potentially a guy that can get depressed real easy. I've done ayahuasca to get off antidepressants, but it's all still always lingering. And even more so when I lost my job and then I had my heart go back into AFib, uh, you know, you, 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 you add up. I'm like, man, I really liked that job. I really liked feeling proud and having these people that listen. You know, we had a community. Wow, I, that's completely gone. And then the heart thing, you go, oh, I don't really care so much about my job. I really just want the heart guys to tell me, you're okay, go back to your life. But at this point, I was 90% sure that that was definitely not the case. That wasn't going to happen. So I was constantly reminding myself that you have today, Jason. You know, things are good today. Maybe, yeah, in five or six years, it's going to crap out and... You know, and then realizing being on the operating table and you know, I had a lot of visions of you're going to cut my heart out and have me running on some machine with no fucking heart. And then you're going to put in another one, like a fake one or a fucking dead dude's one. You're probably going to die. You know, like that just sounds like fuck that. I don't really want that. As cool as it sounds to have a sweet ass scar and then like have a third book where I'm like, yeah, I had a fucking robot heart. I'm no, thank you. I'd rather just live like everybody else because you start to see the bigger picture where I'm like, you know what? I don't really care about you downloading a goddamn thing. I just don't want to go to the heart doctor anymore. I want my life back. I want to go run and jump and yeah. not worry. If I drink too much coffee, oh, is that going to do it? Like just living like that. Yeah, you don't want somebody going Temple of Doom on your ribcage. Yeah. I'm Shabai, I'm Shabai. Man, that took me a second, but yes. <laughs> but uh, so... I've been, you know, trying to meditate, do breath work and, and yoga and, and I, I try to do as many things as I can through the day, 
Uh, not to mention talking to myself, you know what I mean, positive affirmations. It, you're going to be okay. You got your, you've got your today. And and uh, and I thought, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here, but I really just want to help people until I'm gone. And then the doctor calls me yesterday. Hey, and it's out of, you know, some number I don't know. Hey, it's the doctor. And I'm like, oh, fuck, because it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm like, yeah, I did those tests. It was, you know, I remember being in the machine eh, 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 going, man. Yeah, I know that this, this you can will yourself to be better, you know, and I know some people obviously are not going to believe all this, but when you're in that situation, I was like, you're, you're gonna, you're getting better. You're gonna do breath work. You're going to meditate. You're going to make this settle. You're going to adjust your body and you're going to not need a surgery. You're going to make your heart work. I just keep trying to believe that because I got nothing else. I got nothing else. I, what am I going to do? Tell myself you're dead for sure. Yeah. No, I want to say that. So he calls. So immediately I go, oh, oh, hello, doctor. Because I'm getting ready to hear this shit. And he goes, the heart monitor. I know it's scary because we see the documentation of uh, your heart does flutter sometimes and it beats off for uh, up to 12 beats. And I can imagine how scary that is. But that's a, a hereditary thing that you have that is not in... Uh, a part of heart failure or any sort of thing where you are involved in dying. And I was like, so every time, doo, 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 and I'm like, fuck, this is the one. That's just me. Yes, that's just you, Jason. A lot of people have it. You're not going to die from that. Your heart beats off time. Yeah, it just, every now and then it does that. So then he goes, but the MRI shows that you have another thing that, which is also pretty cool, didn't come from any of my drugs or any of my... Cause it, yeah, you, Fuck yeah. I told you drugs were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great news, everybody. Do it all because it doesn't affect you. Yeah. So he said it's the thing you were born with. And that once again, with this uh, beta blocker that at one point when I first taken the beta blocker, I got dizzy so when I stood up sometimes. I got tired for no particular reason. My dick wasn't working and I needed to piss every fucking 15 minutes. And I'm like, is this if this is the new me... This is very hard to do this show and be like, hey man, fucking stay positive because I'm fucking mentally positive. I'm like, I'm fucking. Now, if you hold on for a second, I gotta piss. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and I gotta piss out of my flaccid, <laughs> fucked up dick. So that's why Tom likes his two breaks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it to wake up. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, so he's, you're not, he's like, you're not gonna die. There's no um, restrictions that I have for you except for the the alcohol thing. Which I said, I've opted to not even... I will not do it at all because I just would rather... I don't... If you don't drink too much, you should be fine. I'm like, I just don't. I, I'm just me. Yeah, why it's, poke it? It's just, a, it's just a bad idea for me. Every now and then, I'll probably have two more. And then yeah. if I wake up with that shit again, I have to go in there and they knock me out and they fucking electrocute my heart to back to normal rhythm for a glass of wine. Are you, you are... I mean, I am an alcoholic, but I'm better than that. I'm not... I want my life so, and the, and the, it's such a blessing. I won't learn. I wouldn't learn. And I got all these people that listen to me, and and I'm I'm not a book. It's real. Like I really, you, you fucking kill yourself. You don't realize you're killing yourself. Fucking stressed. You fire me. I'm a drink, but I didn't. Why? Because I don't want to die. But I'm. You're not sure if you're gonna die. Well, I am. My heart told me for sure. I went to the hospital, and they're like, "You are fucking in trouble right now." So now all that to come back around where he's like, you're good. I'm like, how good? It's like, you know, you know, fight, do whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. You're good. No restrictions for you. You're hot. You are not, you are going to live a full life. He said on the phone. No Tony Stark heart. As a guy that was like, you're getting a heart replacement in 10 years. So to me, it's like 60. You're probably looking at death. Maybe you'll make it, you know, he said modern medicine, so you'll probably be okay. But just knowing now that that is not the case, it's this crazy relief thing. But it's, but at the same time, I can't, I I can't let go of what that felt like of you don't have as many days as everybody else has. It really is coming for you. I don't want to lose that. Like, I don't want to lose that feeling. I, 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 I don't like it. But it makes me respect my day way more. It makes me decide to make better decisions with my morning because I don't know how many days I've got. 
And I know now that I, you know, it's like he said, you can, you got a full life. And I go in the parking lot and fucking, you know, mean a bus runs me over. Like of it's course. bullshit that you. No, oh, now I'm back on the list of living forever. No, I'm not. Don't forget that. Everybody, don't forget that. Like you think you're going forever, you're not. And and the small shit, little people, fucking Twitter, blah, 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 fuck that. Doesn't mean anything. It means yeah. nothing in the scheme of things. Just love your friends, love your people, enjoy your life, take some breaths. Oh, if you're stressed, do this breathwork shit. I got a fucking free one today. I recorded it. Almost fainted, but not fainted in a bad way. Just from the the breathing thing. <sighs> And then I don't know why, but I start because my coach guy, that Lucas guy, was teaching when he saw me doing it. He's like, "You got to try and take deeper breaths." So I remember I was trying to take deeper breaths and blowing out a little bit faster so I can get that breath, the breath deep. And all of a sudden, I was like, boom, 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 boom. and my my head started jolting back and forth, and my my lips went, boom, 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 boom. and I was like, boom, boom, boom. and I opened my eyes. I'm like, "Whoa!" Boom, Wait, was Katie sitting there watching you go? Boom, 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 no, boom, my dog boom. was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My dog was like, "Are you okay?" And she tried to give me her ball. That's her. That's her doctor skills. She they, thought you were saying ball. They do what ball, they can. Ball, ball. She was like, "Oh fuck, you look like you're gonna faint." Ball. I know it helps me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It really does calm her down. Hey everybody, Jason Ellis here from the Jason Ellis Show, talking about my erection and all the other re- erections that can be achieved by simply signing up to Blue Chew. I myself am now a member, and I received a package in the mail recently. It's got this little zip locker thingy so children can't get into it. And then you pop it open and there's little magical things in there. And you chew on one of those bad boys. And then you are the destroyer of all the holes in the world. Like, yoing, 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 yoing. <laughs> I can, Thanks for being here, Kevin. <laughs> you can, and I'm talking about like you could seal a volcano. You, you, could, you could fuck the lava cold. And save Hawaii. That's right. That could be you. And here is a special deal for all of our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Ellis at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Ellis to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. I'm going to chew one right now, Michael, and then uh, lift my Jeep and change a wheel. These breathing techniques remind me of when I was like seven and I learned how to burp on command. And then I was like, it's pretty oh, much the same thing. I'm just going to burp. You and Wim Hof, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I was like, I'm just going to burp for like an hour straight. And I was like, <laughs> and then I fell off my chair. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I yeah. mean, you, that you is. You burped yourself into hyperventilation. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing where. You're like a spare I, goonie. It was sweet. I saw this thing where they did tests for people that, there's monks that like live out in the cold and they do the breathing exercise and they make the snow melt around them or they have wet clothes on and they do the breathing and they heat up and dry the clothing. And then they, there's like people say, that's bullshit. It's not even true. Uh, people can stay in water for 10 minutes that uh, would guarantee give you hypothermia. Mm-hmm. But if you use the Wim Hof, it fucking heats up your core and you stay hot and you do things that were once proven to be impossible. Like sure. people say, if you're in, uh, what is it, 35 or 40 degree temperature water for 10 minutes, you're getting hypothermia. Right. And Wim Hof has like broken world records by just sitting in there doing this breath work. Right. But it must be controlled because to me, I can tell, and I've and I already was advised to not do that by myself because a lot of people will do the breathing thing and and pass out in the water. Yes, right. It's a bad place to pass right. out. Well, I think when they tell you that stuff too, it is, uh, with all due respect, and I do mean it to, to Wim Hof, when they say if blah, blah, blah happens, blah, blah, blah will happen, they're talking about on average. Like, there were people, there were survivors they pulled out of the water from the Titanic a couple hours later. Like, the the power, the will to survive can allow you to exceed what ought to be the normal. Well, I, I mean, if, I feel like if it's, if you're moving, yeah, I, that's. It's half of it, but if you're doing a breath work, you you heat up your core. But right. If yeah. you're cold and you stand there versus the person that starts doing jumping jacks, jumping jack guy is going to live longer than you. So yes. if you're kicking a lot in the water, you can you can if you heat yourself up, it's pretty hot. look. You know, if I heat my sauna up, I work out in the sauna. The hit sauna gets way hotter. I see the temperature gauge go up. Yeah. Right. Like you heat things up, but to do it by just sitting here breathing. Because that's the other thing. A lot of people working out seems like a big deal doing all that kind of stuff. The breathing thing is like a, a mental clarity that you get from it. And it's not a pill or anything. It's a little bit of extra uh, energy for the day. It 
and, and I, I mean, I still haven't used it for the cold yet. I've, I only learned this, learn all this breath stuff and since I've learned it. I, have, I don't have a cold plunge. So I haven't gone and went in the ocean, but I'm not doing it because the guy said, I'm so new to it. Like today, I did it to the point where I almost fainted. Probably shouldn't do that in the ocean by myself, you know? Yeah, it's a good call. But I think you can do it before you go in. Yes. And then maybe settle for a second and be like, right, am I okay? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think you know your boundaries. I think, and, and I, and I, I think, think the guys who, who go awry with that are, they're trying to be heroes. I, if you want to test the boundaries, yeah. I don't want to test the boundaries of, of, uh, breath mess with work. the bull. Yeah, that's exactly like Carl Kingsbury wants to test the boundaries of it. Let's go cold plunge. Let's go 35. And I'm like, wait, isn't that like freezing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, you know what I mean? You're, you're fine. I'm like, you're fine. I, you know what I mean? Like, let's do all the mushrooms. I'm like, I, don't, I like a little bit of mushrooms. Not all the mushrooms. Oh, no, all the mushrooms. And then you go inside, you see yourself. And I'm like, ah, I could use a mirror, you know? Yeah. And even that on a little bit of mushrooms is kind of a bummer. You ever notice yeah. that? How you look like shit on shrooms? In, yeah. in mirrors? Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's like the the cardinal it. rule of tripping. Never look in the mirror. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. You talking about teaching yourself to burp reminded me my, my daughter had a personal breakthrough this morning she farted on command while staring at us five consecutive times she was so goddamn proud of herself she could start her own method yeah yeah yeah, yeah no she's got mad fart control because it's like <laughs> by the third one it's like you're gonna poop your pants you know where this is going you don't know where this is going i know where this is going but she never did she might be the chosen one she's a natural yeah so good so you're well right yeah like How almost good forgot did, uh waking up this morning feel you you know what it's you take it for you wake up and you, I woke up and I was like Jason Ellis show videos you gotta post I fucked up today I went to my phone because I woke up early mm. lately I've been not going to my phone and I go do breath work but today I looked at my phone because I got up I woke up too early and I was like fucking where's those videos to post for the Jason Ellis show so I didn't realize it until after I went downstairs and did some breath work and I was like wow that phone call really fucking happened yesterday didn't it it's really true Okay, and then and th- that was the other reason why I didn't hit up anybody at the Hard Rock, who's now Virgin Hotel, because I don't want to call them and they go, "Yeah, Jason, we'll sign you up," and I go, "Yeah, I got a heart problem, I can't fight." I don't want to be in that. I want my doctors to say, "You can go." Yeah, and then I call them and go, "Hey, you guys still interested in Alice Mania?" And then if he says yes, then all these things that seemed, you know, I was like, "We'll still do it. I'll just be an announcer." You know, I would. I had already. He could be like Muhammad Ali in the later years. Hey, this is looking pretty good, champ. And you just like do the little jab on their chin. Yeah, no, pretty soon I'll... You get him, killer. I'd just be like, hey, 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 back to the show. I take all you motherfuckers. Yeah, oh, you, you tell him, champ. Remember when he tried to do like this crazy stare yeah. with his head? Like, yeah, right. That's such a sad thing there. Yes, that was the Muhammad Ali of my generation. That was the guy that I knew. Yeah, I watch old fights, not so much anymore, but I would watch old fights where he had retired and become an announcer and... Like you said, he would uh, point out a lot of stuff, but he he really uh, constantly asked for rematches and fights <laughs> with the person that was in the ring. Yeah, and I was, and this was like he had an illustrious announcing career. It wasn't a couple of fights. Yeah, it was ten years of it. So we're talking. Yeah, he's in a suit, down you know shaking on the ten. He's like, hey, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. And it's like, wait, are you picking a fight with George Foreman? He's like, we could go. And then the announcer that's with him is like, so, you know, Ali, you're thinking about, I could do it. I'll be back. I'm like, you will not be back. Nobody hit him. Everybody make, if you hit him, you're a bastard. Yeah. It's, I mean, a man who once spoke exceptionally well. He did. Yeah. He was, a, he invented hip hop. That's right. They say that. And I have no reason to doubt them. Was it Muhammad Ali that invented hip hop or was it that white girl with the spiky hair? I heard had baby? No, bad behavior. <laughs> <laughs> what, Katie? I was gonna say Debbie Harry. They argue that Debbie Harry. Yeah, Debbie Harry from what's the band? Blondie. Yeah, Blondie. The first Blondie's first rap she did was that not the first recorded rap? No, I'm that, not saying she invented. I'm just saying. I think that that was the first rap song that charted. Okay. Because she was. It's really cool. In nineteen, in the late seventies, in, really cool. in New York. Punk was happening downtown, the Ramones, Blondie, and in Midtown, Disco was happening. That's when Studio 54 is happening. And in and in Harlem in the Bronx, that's Rapper's Delight. Hip hop, yeah. that's fucking amazing. That is the best couple of years musically any city has ever had in the history of the world. Just that alone makes them the greatest city uh, in the world. They did it all yep. in pretty much one year. And Debbie Harry was just a cool person who had her ear to the ground. And that's why 
Blondie, who's a punk band downtown, also does Heart of Glass, which is disco. Studio 54 is just a couple stops on the train. And she does Rapture, because it's just up in the Bronx. Uh, yeah. And she knew Fab Five Freddy. She name dropped him. He later on went on to uh, Yo MTV Raps Glory. Oh, uh, yeah, that's great. That's yeah. huge. So she did, not, uh, she did not invent hip hop, but she did popularize it. Hmm. Yep. Very unlike white people to take something that darker skinned <laughs> people are doing and to do it slightly less well and to be celebrated for it. <laughs> she invented that as well. I heard Chris Gaines is coming back. Chris Gaines. Where's he been? Be Chris Gaines. He's a he's guy been, that he's does... been growing out his librette hair this whole time. <laughs> That's uh, Garth Brooks's alter ego. Oh fuck! Yeah, he got too fat to be Chris Gaines, right? I don't know if he's making new. Is Chris, Chris Gaines, Gaines allowed to be fat? Like maybe they fat? both somehow gained weight at the same time. That does that wouldn't <laughs> if if you're an emo, you don't get fat. You were you were either born uh, fat. You'd be surprised what you can squeeze into skinny jeans. What? The, what about the guy, the cure guy? He was always fat. Yeah. See, he didn't get fat. No. Yeah, Robert Smith's junkie. Monkey. Chris Gaines can't. <laughs> but you know, the thing with Robert Smith is he always looked like Liz Taylor. So when he, he was did. young, he looked like a young Liz Taylor, and then he, as he got old, he looked like the old Liz Taylor. Ah, that's nice. Yeah. They both turned into that light bulb shape. Thing. Maybe that was her, Chris Gaines. <laughs> oh, where the whole time Liz that was Taylor her? was the cure. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, Chris Gaines, he's... Because uh, you have not been able to get that album for some time, for people who don't recall. Oh, no. Yeah, it was completely out of commission and, like, scrubbed from YouTube, etc. And now he's just, like, pretending that it was cool and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to re-release it. There's some unreleased Chris Gaines tracks that people never even heard, and I love Chris Gaines, so I can't wait for people to hear it again. Just a completely... <laughs> Good news, guys. I just got off the phone with Chris Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> wait, he's, he... a... he's available. He really is doing that? <laughs> yes. You know what, though? Didn't he always suck? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, so right. this is like a sucky move that all his fans that are into sucky shit yeah. would be like, oh yeah, that's so sucky. I love it when you fake Chris Gaines people <laughs> 20 years later, you fat fuck. Chris Gaines, I think I liked that. Yeah. Oh good, it's back. I remember you saying you liked your alter ego Chris yeah. Gaines, so I'm a fan. Oh, can he please go on the Warped Tour? Can they bring it back so oh. Chris Gaines can headline Warped this summer? Like, like Blink-182 and Chris, <laughs> Chris Gaines? Gaines? i kind of like to see him at the Gathering. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he is Hell a clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a fucking asshat. Uh, Does that mean he's going to grow this thing back? He's got to get the librette back. Maybe he's got a stick on. Maybe he gets a really oh, big yeah. one to like cover the fat that's underneath his chin. <laughs> a huge librette. That he would be believable. A human soul patch. Maybe, yeah, maybe. What if his soul patch is like this big. <laughs> yeah, it's like a ZZ Top soul patch. <laughs> what about if he does a thing where he he Clark Kent's Chris Gaines? So at every concert, Garth Brooks shows up, and they're like, hey, Garth. And he's just like, hey, guys, I thought I'd see Chris tonight. And they're like, oh, he's not here yet. And he goes, oh, really? I got to go to the bathroom. And then he comes back out. <laughs> and they go, whoa, you missed Chris. You just missed Chris Gaines again, Garth Brooks. Wait, he does it on stage? <laughs> oh, he does it to his roadies. Oh, and oh, he, his roadies he, have no idea that they're the same guy. He asked, Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he should be, when you think about it, I feel like you guys be, would get along great. He should be fighting crime or something. He's a special man. I feel yeah. like wasting your uh, your talents on being Chris Gaines for the 20th time. <laughs> Surely there's something else you could go do. He was didn't supposed they to do, make a movie. Um, didn't they do a split appearance on SNL back in the day? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. So like, did Garth Brooks introduce <laughs> him and then just run behind a curtain and mess his hair up? And It's yeah. like when I turned from the woodsman to Cher. Very <laughs> yeah. similar. I feel like I ought to know the answer to that question. They probably had a cast member introduce Chris Gaines, but yeah, I think Garth was the the comedy host and Chris Gaines was the musical act. Yeah. And they did the behind the music or what he talked about. Like he wasn't even cool enough to pretend that he'd had a heroin addiction. So I think he pretended he'd had a sex addiction. Oh, what? Yeah. Well, because Chris Gaines had a dark side, so they had to have something to pin oh, it on. Oh, and he wouldn't even... Yeah, I was just getting all into Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know, all Tang all the time. <laughs> Wait, the good... You know the, me, good Gaines, I know the Tang. The Love orange go- juice or the pussy? No, the pussy. Oh. Let's give that, that librette wet. You know me, Chris It Gaines. makes more sense that he would be addicted to Tang. <laughs> 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 Garth, Garth Brooks the likes the drink. It's good, good enough for astronauts. Yeah, good he just, for me. He just three o'clock in the morning, just pouring <laughs> Tang all over his nipples and shit. <laughs> that makes more sense to me, that he can't get enough of the Tang, but it's not pussy. No. Yeah, I think Chris Gaines was a sex addict, and now he's back on the scene. A <laughs> sex addict to who? <laughs> who the hell's lying with that guy? The crazy thing is Chris Gaines could totally get laid. At a Garth Brooks concert. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's pretty much where he hangs out. I was going to say, there's nowhere <laughs> the else. Place Chris he Gaines is not getting laid anywhere else. You know that. <laughs> See, I don't know about that. Walmart? If- no way. Uh, no, I bet he cleans up at Walmart. Come on. <laughs> 
Chris Gaines goes to a Walmart like deep in the heart of Texas and you think he does not get laid? Oh yeah, because he's dressed like a poser. I thought Walmart in Texas would hate a guy that has that haircut. But he's Chris Gaines. Like, uh, like, I don't think Robert wait, Smith... Wait, you're saying everybody in Texas loves Chris Gaines? I think everybody in Texas loves Garth Brooks so much that some chick will still fuck Chris Gaines. Yeah. Oh, because they know they're fucking Garth Brooks. But he will not drop character. If he's like, oh, Garth, keep hearing about this guy. Gotta meet him someday. <laughs> How much <laughs> is... Anyway, where's the tank? How much of his character sounds any different than Garth Brooks? <laughs> not very different, I was gonna I say, he kind of just puts on a fucking chin strap and starts <laughs> talking... The same way. I would have to revisit the VH1 behind the music of Chris Gaines, but that's how I recall it. If he could get like a garter belt yeah. and like really tuck in his fatness mm-hmm. when he's Chris Gaines to the point where you're like, that's not the same guy. That would be it. Or he wore a fat suit when he was Garth Brooks <laughs> and secretly lost the weight. Oh, that would be terrific. If, Garth, mean, so if Garth, like a- Garth got a little bit bigger, but then Chris was all of a sudden incredibly svelte. It would he, help keep up the ruse. He could do trim spa ads. Yeah. Ooh. He needs the money for sure. <laughs> what happened to our guest? Yeah. Island time. Island time. Yep. Island time? It's like half an hour. <laughs> hey, aloha the fuck out, okay? All right. <laughs> China's first sex doll brothel has uh. been closed without explanation. Um, Sh- shut down by local police, I should say. Can sex dolls get STDs and transmit them to other people. See, this sounds utterly appalling, but the more I think about it, it so- sounds ever so slightly less appalling. The guys are obliged. I don't know how you enforce this, but it says the guys are obliged to wear condoms. Let's just say. Yeah. The idea is, and I think this is supposed to be. It's not like the rubber girl's going to tell anybody. I think this is. Uh, no, that's true. Is also not like she's going to get pregnant. This is supposedly, if this news story is to be believed, at the Foxconn factory, which I think is the notorious iPhone one where they said that they put up nets to keep people from jumping and killing themselves. Oh, I don't yeah. I don't know if that is true. I don't even know if this is the exact same Foxconn factory. But I do know that there are many people in China who like were raised in the countryside. And then it's very similar to what happened with the Industrial Revolution in America and England. And then get this job in the big smoke. So they go away from their family and all they've ever known and they work all day and on the weekends they like hang out in dormitories, maybe go for like an ice cream or something. So it's not impossible for me to imagine that these guys have very good jobs compared to what was available where they're from, but absolutely no sexual outlet. So if you are just jerking off all the time and somebody goes, you can either keep jerking off or you can spend, I think it's like 20 bucks yeah, and you can have some alone time with a sex doll and you have no risk whatsoever of STDs. Yeah. I can see people taking them up on that. Yeah, it's, I would fuck a, a sex doll. I don't want to go anywhere f- to have sex with a sex doll, but if you brought me a sex doll, uh, then yeah, sure, I'll fuck it. Thank you. Yeah, Glad you to go. be here. Would you fuck a sex doll? Um, Just for the story. I'm, I'm not... Wait, uh, you would t- immediately tell everybody about <laughs> your sex doll fuckings? I mean, you think I would have sex with a sex doll and not talk about it here? I... Yes, I, I never. Would... I know, but just to know that you're only gonna fuck the sex doll to tell the story of fucking a sex doll here seems there's, like there's there's no appeal to it. I remember getting like you a fucked prom- the flashlight, right? I did, yeah, and I didn't seek it out. It was sent to me. It was a free yeah. f- f- flashlight, so it was like, okay, yeah, why too. not? And I had sex with it, and I remember, yeah, there was significant Peter remorse, like right after. What's Peter remorse? Who's Peter? Uh, your penis, your dongus. I why remember. Why is it called Peter? I don't know. Peter Johnson. There's a million. Is this one of those dick. blue-eyed people or colorblind things? No. Th- Do you call your dick Peter? It's a very old school way of referring to your to your dick. Is this a Jersey thing? No. I don't think so. It's more of an old thing. I would say Peter is like the 75th most popular nickname for dick. Wait, you're saying Katie that they said it in Alaska as well? Yeah, my dad. There you had, go. Had been named uh, to call it a Peter. Say no more. Got a skeeter on your Peter. Oh, oh no, man! I swear, my wife sometimes. <laughs> that's why she like wants to fix the TV and shit if anything breaks. Yeah, she's a little bit. Yeah, like her dad thing where I see, I'm like, oh god, which I don't mind because yeah. I'm a little bit girly. I'm like, I don't know how to fix a TV. You yeah, do it. luckily she's country bear jamboree. 
I didn't know that means. <laughs> Where's that from? What the fuck is Country Bear Jamboree? Man, it's I'm like learning some shit animatronic, today. Animatronic, like uh, Chuck E. Cheese oh, bears those guys, that are playing yeah. like the, the wash tub. I love yeah. those guys. <laughs> there you go. They're a great band. They are a great band. I, I've always <laughs> enjoyed those from a young age to now. I'd rather go see them than Chris Gaines. I'd fucking way rather <laughs> see them than Chris Gaines. Or the Chili Peppers. Or any of those fuck knobs. <laughs> fucking pieces of shite. So you had Peter Remorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt a little weird. And then Why? especially... I don't know. It was just like, ah, I'm gross. I, uh, and it was, did you say that when you cut, when you jerk yourself off with your hand? No. Isn't it weird that you, because you put a piece of rubber in the middle of it? You know what? Because, felt- like, cause, you know, like, the, there's that, you know, that old joke, like, you should jerk off before you make any major decision because that's when your brain is the clearest. So my, my brain just initially went, sh- like, like that into rational mode. And it's like, ah, oh, I got to clean this fucking thing. This is gross. Uh, okay. Cleaning it is different. I feel like cleaning it is kind of, I feel, I do feel like a bit of a loser. Yeah. But I also, I was the same as you. We got some scent to the show. So I just fucked it and threw it in the trash. And one time I had another one where Katie (laughs) jerked me off with it. And that was cool. But it didn't, it wasn't like, wow, let's just do that all the time. It was one time. I was like, you you know, you know, it'd be way better. Yeah. And like the sex dolls, they, they just like, ooh, you don't know that. I would, some of those good looking ones that are at the uh, porn conventions yep. I've seen in like a glass box and shit, yep. I would totally fuck one of those. And I wouldn't fuck one of those to tell the story here. Would I tell the story here? Yeah, yeah. But I would just fuck it because, um, uh, man, I guess because I'm creepy. I don't even think I don't I'm creepy. Think that's creepy. It's kind of a hot chick, but it's not a hot chick. I want to see what it's like to fuck it. Man, I sound creepy when it's coming out. <laughs> I don't know how that. <laughs> I'm trying to justify it, but I, as it's coming out, I'm like, I, I, shut I, I, up, you creep. I just think anything worth doing is worth doing well. You yeah. Know? If it's lunchtime and you have to go to McDonald's, go to McDonald's. But if you don't, get some real food for yeah. lunch. If you have to jerk off, jerk off well. Well said, and if you Michael. Like, and if you like the sex doll, yeah, I would take, if you could give me, like, if I could go to whatever, realsexdoll.com and have my pick of the litter and then some robot was going to clean it out for me after every time that I used it because I don't want to do it myself and I can't imagine hiring a human in, you know, in good faith to do that. Yeah, I would keep a sex doll in my closet. Katie, would you have a threesome with me and a sex doll? <laughs> no. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't do that either. What about if I did, like, I did her voice while we were like, oh yeah, <laughs> I really like that, Katie. Hey, <laughs> pound me in the minge. <laughs> <laughs> I made her talk like that. Oh, Katie, pound me in me vagina. <laughs> hey, don't neglect me, Volva. Your husband's got a great cock. <laughs> wow, thank you, old lady. Kill me. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> So Katie might go for that one. What about if she's always talking about killing herself or getting you to kill her, Katie? Would that be kinky? I just come in and slit its throat while you're fucking it. Ooh. Oh, man. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> sweet grenades. <laughs> yeah, wow. We could get really dark, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got to trim my mustache, man. But I'm almost at the point where I could grow my mustache and it could be a thing. But I just feel like... It's like spider's fingers trying to steal my food at night. I don't know how Geraldo does it. Right? He's, and for your whole life to never know your top lip seems stupid. It's a valuable thing, your top lip. Yeah. Because if you don't have one, then a moustache would be nice. Kind of like when you don't have a chin, a beard. Mm. It's handy. Like girls with no chin. Because if you have a beard and you're a girl with no chin, I don't know if that helped. No, you sort of, yeah, you've sort of. Fixed one problem with a far greater problem. <laughs> Depending on who you are, yes, Marco, you're right. <laughs> I told you one time my little brother, Sweet Stevie, was it's so little that he was in the shopping cart, you know, with the one where the little baby puts their legs in the, the sit-down part of the shopping cart. Mm-hmm. And an uh, 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 older lady came over to say hello to Stevie, and Stevie said, Mom, Mom, she's got whiskers. <laughs> oh, man. And I was just, you know, being in the supermarket, and... Man's talking to this nice lady and Stevie's trying to go, Mom, Mom. And he's just pointing at it, going, She's got whiskers. And she had, but she did have like Fu Manchu crazy ones. I know that's the thing about kids is they tell the truth. Yeah. I was like, You can't, he had a point. You could have just, 
I know they didn't have pin shavers in the 80s, but there was a shaver that could have got those bad boys. Razors had been invented. Yeah. And my, when my little sister was, was a baby, we were at the beach, and she ran up to this woman who was like, must have been like 400 pounds, hmm. and in a bikini. And my sister wow. like tapped her on the leg and goes, wow, lady, you have big muscles. Aww. And she, she thought it was funny. But like yeah. my mom ran over horrified. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And she also had a thing like, my sister would always point and go, fat legs, fat legs, at any fat person. Ooh. And she was like knee high. So I remember like it would happen all the time. We were waiting yeah. in line. To all buy... she saw was legs. Yeah. So we're waiting in line to buy movie tickets. And there's this large woman in front of us wearing shorts. And my sister looks up at my mom, looks back at the legs, looks at my mom, looks at the legs. And my mom's going, no, no, no. And she goes, hey, fat legs. And we're just like, oh, shit. You know, you guys are bad parents when she's, everyone thinks that. You know that? Like I'm if sure. I saw a little kid at the supermarket calling a fat lady fat legs, I would look at the parents and be like, yeah. wow. Like we, t- we were like, really? it's not cool. You can't yeah. say that. It makes people feel bad. Really, like, okay. Yeah, you are not spanking that kid properly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of bad moms, did yeah. you hear about this? A Jacksonville, Florida mother has been charged with child abuse after a fight with a student on the campus of a middle school. Wait, and, they had a fisticuffs? Yeah. So I think what happened Who is- Who started it? <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask. I think mm. this mom's daughter had been in some sort of physical altercation or maybe just some sort of disagreement. So they called the mom into the office and yeah. she, I think, had already made up her mind that it was the other girl's fault. Uh, so yes. after getting her satisfaction from the principal, she then took it physically to her daughter's frenemy she fought her daughter's frenemy she showed up wearing one boxing glove <laughs> wait like the guy in the ufc in the first <laughs> ufc fights that's awesome yeah so what one hand was for grappling and the other one was for punching she had a boxing glove attached to her left hand when she showed up at the school is it a 10 ounce glove or is it a small one I, I i can't i can't tell you that but what i can tell you is they asked her why she had it on and if she would take it off and she told them she could not because it was super glued to her wrist <laughs> gangster yeah that is such a gangster thing to say i hope that she meant that the victim suffered abrasions to her knees Wait. and forearms abrasions she she, she, she probably pushed got, her over she probably landed one on the chin and the girl knocked over and got some she punched some a, she punched her, a mom punched a lady i don't know that for sure but i do know that she took she showed up with a boxing glove she showed up angry at this one girl she confronted the other girl and the other girl ended up with abrasions i've uh, <laughs> I often wondered <laughs> excuse me i've often wondered about that when it comes to your kids you know like my son's only 12 my daughter's 16 you know, when it comes to my daughter, if you are a 17-year-old boy and you punch my daughter, you know, that I can't punch him, but I am. <clears throat> yeah. You know, like, if you if you put hands on my daughter, um, you're getting dealt with, for sure. I was if at, it's in front of me, you're fucking gone. See, I was at the Grove, the outdoor mall here in Los Angeles this past weekend, and my kid was in a different part of a store than I was. And he came back and he said he wasn't comfortable being by himself because he thought that a kid and the kid's dad were laughing at him. And he said that a ball had like kind of come over and grazed his leg. And he thought that they had tossed it at him on purpose. And he turned around and they were reacting like they had. And I'm like, I can't, I have to see this with my own eyes. You're nine years old. I can't take your word for this. And he said that when we'd been outside on the other side of the mall, when I was getting a coffee, he had seen the father son looking at him and saying something and snickering. Whoa. So now I want to catch him in the act because I have no issue, obviously, with dealing with the dad, who I'm not a big guy. The dad was even smaller than I am. So I'm very comfortable with the terms of that confrontation. Get him, Michael. Yeah, but it's weird because uh, you do obviously have to, to see it. And by the time I ascertain the individuals they were already on the escalator on the way down i'm inclined to think that my son doesn't know what he's talking about right but 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 maybe not dude that's because i feel like that's believable these days there's a lot of i see videos of people chasing kids following them around schools and they're filming themselves going this guy's following me and then it just shows a guy following a bunch of chicks at a skate park yeah shit like that where like you're an adult and you're following my daughter and her friends around i I mean it's the same as soccer game if a kid's being a dick to my kid I, I'm not, I, I mean, that's soccer, it's different. But if your parents start saying some shit, what's up? Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm keep it cool, but if you say some shit to my son, then what's up? 
Right. And 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 I <laughs> It's so wrong, but I had, I haven't done it for the record, yeah. but I have heard a guy go, little shit, and I was like <sighs> Right. You know, like I'm not gonna go over there, but did you just call a twelve year old a little shit? Like loud? Yeah. That my son, you called him a little shit? And I know my son and I know my ex wife and I know that if I go over there that it's yeah, that's what Jason would do. So I don't go over there. See, but they I, do need somebody. I don't. I w- if another dad did that, I wouldn't be like frowning upon that guy. I'd be like, yeah, man, you just called a twelve-year-old a piece of shit. We're all parents here. Like, whatever foul happened, you don't yell abuse to a twelve-year-old. Right, right, right. This I this I welcomed because I I am intimidated by the idea of having to physically defend my family if there's ever a home intruder or something like that. I'm not that guy. I'm not built for that. I don't welcome this sort of thing happening if I take my son to, you know, King of the Cage or drag racing or something like that. That might be a bad matchup for me. But, like, if somebody wants to have a verbal altercation at Barnes & Noble, like, now you're in my dojo. Right. I can handle that guy. I look forward to that. Yeah. I love being around somebody that's got some verbal skills. I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, slash him. Yeah. Slash this motherfucker. And if he gets out of line, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Yeah. Just verbally slash this fool. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. love that stuff. Maine may soon become, practically speaking, the first state in the union to allow Viking-style funeral pyre Whoa. Yes. cremations, open-air cremations, mm. a la Game of Thrones. A la Jedi's. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, right. At the end of that. Yeah, we said it recently on on one of our shows that being put in the ground after having a wake at a funeral home is like the least attractive thing I could possibly imagine to happen to my remains when I pass on from this earthly realm. This is way up there, and I, I still like the idea of being put in a little burlap sack so I become a tree and my my descendants can come and visit great grandfather tree. But this well, I think who was is, that? Who was that again? Was that was that? Uh... Uh, George, ah, oh, Bart, the Beatle, George Harrison. Did they make Didn't him he a, turn tree? Into a tree? Isn't that what Ringo said? Oh, yeah, Paul no, Mac- Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney pissed on him every <laughs> <Yeah>. morning. <laughs> yeah. Paul McCartney said that George gave him a tree. And yes. he believes that. And he talks to that tree every morning. Oh, as yeah, if yeah, George yeah, yeah, yeah. Harrison's spirit is in it. But we've heard about these things, right? Where they put you with a bunch of seeds inside like a biodegradable sack and then they bury you somewhere. And then mm-hmm. one day you're part of a, of a human, dead human grove. I did that for my brother. Yeah, I think my, that's... I think my brother and my dad are trees. I know my brother's a tree, but I think my dad's just like in the motocross track. My grandma is sold on the idea of becoming a diamond. Oh, oh so. that's, you know what? I've got my brother's ashes because I was going to get a diamond earring in... Because it's five... I think it's like five grand or maybe 20. I can't remember what it was. It was something where... I didn't ever. Ha- I never had the money to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I, when I used to wear a diamond earring, I was gonna, cause I knew he'd be. He used to wear one too, but now I'm like a diamond. I don't, I don't even. What, what would I? Where would I wear it? Yeah, yeah. My grandparents have committed to donating their bodies to science, and I then they that. said cremate what, whatever's left. And my grandma's like, yeah, to, and turn me into a diamond. I want to be a diamond. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I would do that too. Do we need to talk about how I demonstrated my elite? Jump kicking skills. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, you could do that. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how the videos are going to turn out, but yeah, you are some kind of ninja. First, I take flight. Who? Once, the- ha- having, having defined <clears throat> seemingly the laws of physics and gravity, I have, I have all day in the air to decide exactly how I want to deploy my lethal heels. My only thing is, I don't know if you noticed, but how high your lethal kick is. Yeah. It's about where the penis would be. <laughs> That's by design, Jason. Right. So <laughs> you, if you're in an, an, a dispute where yeah. you're winning the debate yeah. and they lose their cool, right. you will do a running jump kick to the Nats <laughs> if, that you have broken boards with. This is a, an effective strike. If I can break a board, I can probably break one of your testicles. I also want to uh, add that you're probably, if you do this at Whole Foods, you're probably going to break your shoulder or your collarbone when you land sideways on the ground. It's a price I'm willing to pay to crush one of your testicles. Right, because that testicle will be fucking sore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you no face, mistake. I think you face out of hand at the Barnes uh, Noble. You face planted quite a few times in the, the one time runs. I really did. Yeah, I'm yeah. more into the face that you pulled when you realized that the board had snapped before you landed on the ground than anything. Yeah, because we got some good slow mo angles. Sound like yeah. you look like you're jizzing in the air. Yeah, that I'm was very me happy reacting to the sweet taste of victory. <laughs> did we get any of the bales on a GoPro? Or did that that all happen before we were rolling? Oh, I got uh, at least one. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah, because those were great too. Yeah, I only noticed on the where I said maybe you don't practice anymore when I 
felt like I saw your head bounce off the ground. Yeah, if, if that guy's testicle was down there, it also would have been a problem. Right. <laughs> Double shot. <laughs> so if someone's talking shit and they're lying on the on their back on the ground, they're pretty much gone. If it's <laughs> you fine don't want to go there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like if, to see where you will uh, jump and land on your side on the ground, and then the side of your temple will bong off their nads. If some sort of couple is talking shit at the beach, and one person is sun tanning and the other person is standing oh, up, oh, say maybe. goodnight. That's a one-two <laughs> knockout. That's, that's how that's how Jackie Chan destroys testicles. It's <laughs> a setup right there. You have fallen into the trap because we did that upstairs in the the Tiger Wolf Dojo, and didn't have too much of a runway, so you got to maybe take like two or three steps before making your. Um, uh, very graceful leap. Yeah, I would like to see how you do with the with the bigger runway. To be honest, it, it made it more compact. That I was really just propelling myself off the wall. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you had a bigger run up and maybe a trampoline or something, then That's, you could do a head kick. I was expecting. But you'd need some serious padding to land on. I was expecting a, a trampoline. I'm sorry, I don't have a trampoline. I'll get that. Because when I did get... uh, when I when I used to do taekwondo when I was younger. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, back when I was a karate master. Yeah. Yes, with Sensei uh, Ken. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, to, like, to get up and belt, they they had to, you had to do the flying kick through a board. Yes. That was, like, one of the, the, the final requirement after you did your form and stuff. And I remember, like, when the belt went up, they started adding students that I had to leap over. So I oh. had to get, I forget which belt it was. It might have been for my, my brown belt. But I had to do, like, a flying kick over three students that were, like, crouched into a ball. Yeah. Like and lined you did up. that. Yeah. Got video. Uh, they you were. You have no proof. They could were. Could you do that now? Because um, if you could do it now, then I believe you did it then. But if you yeah. can't do it now, then you didn't do it. You're I could scare up a couple eight-year-olds. All right, let's Wait, do it. Wait, we could just pretend we're eight. Also true. Or we could line up pillows. You could jump my so dogs. Eh, they, they, they're, they're, They'll definitely They're kind of skittish. Yeah. You just jump us. My wife's pretty much the same size as an eight-year-old, like a big one. It's true. I think I could do it. I think I would watch that. I would like to do a hurricane kick through a board as well, because I've been working on hurricane kicks. I'd be nervous to ho- to hold it. Shout out to YouTube. For the hurricane kick? I've seen your hurricane kicks. They're yep. good, but I don't know where your accuracy is, and well, you might kick a thumb. Uh, fuck you, man. Tully yeah. kicked me in the shoulder like three times before I even went for the board. This is the price you pay for being a part of the show. Yeah. Look, it's not always being the, the, the hammer. Sometimes you got to be the nail. Welcome to the Jason Ellis show. <laughs> I keep hearing that a lot in MMA. Everyone keeps doing that. The hammer and the nail yeah. thing. I'm like, okay, you're the hammer. Uh, right. She doesn't like being the hammer. I mean, the nail. I'm like, eh, we'll see. You're probably wrong. I mean, who does like being the nail? I really want to do due to my slut. Mm-hmm. Why can't I just do that? Yo! Is she a hoe? I let some brothers run a train. It only feels good when there's pain. All my clothes are semen stains. Dude, is she a slut? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. And welcome to the first ever podcast where we do the legendary uh, bit, Dude, Am I a Slut? Popular demand. So here we are. And we have two incredibly hot women that have zoomed us in on the Jason L show. Holy shit, you're hot. Welcome to Dude Am I a Slut. You know what's way better than uh, radio? You, s- I always assumed that every time a girl called, they were as hot as them. Turns out we were right. I was right. <laughs> How crazy is that? So uh, who do we have here? Ladies, what are your names? Or you, or you can be anonymous. You can be, what would we just... No one will ever know who you are. Don't worry about it. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have no shame. My name's Tara. All right, Tara, we're going to put a mustache on you so no one will even know you. Don't worry about it. Well, Chris Gaines, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you both are going to look like Chris Gaines in this video. <laughs> we're gonna... Hi, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Welcome to Dude Am I a Slut. We brought a third slut, by the way. Our little patoots. Right, that's <laughs> extra creepy. And on the radio, I think yeah. we'd already yeah. be kicked off by now. We'll do that one on Patreon. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll get to your dog at a later date. So, uh, so Brooke, do you want to go first? Sure, yeah. Uh, due to my slut, um, one time when I was in grade 10, I gave a blowjob on a school bus ride and I got kicked out of Catholic school. Wow. Uh, <laughs> how many people were in the bus when you blew this guy? There was like 17, but we were in the back and they were in the front. <laughs> so do you think that nobody knew it was happening or do you think, how many people do you think in the bus knew that was happening? 
I don't think anyone knew. I think he told a bunch of people after. What's up with guys? Why do they have to do that? Did he get kicked out too? Yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, okay. At least they kept it fair. Wow. Uh, Do you still like him? (laughs) Uh, I have not talked to him in probably 15 years. (laughs) Did you like him? Did you really have feelings for him at the time? Yes. Yes. Not after he told everyone. Are you to this day still occasionally tempted to blow someone on public transportation? That's a good question. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no. Well, then that means... <laughs> I think you're in the clear. Yeah, you are not a slut. There you go. All right! You get one get out of jail free card for sex on the bus. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me another story because you're probably going to lose if you do it again. <laughs> Handies and Ubers. I get it, though. Some buses, they vibrate, you know? They kind of get you going. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I took a bus to high school every day. Uh, That's I, right. You used to you had a boner in it every day, right? Every morning. But the combination of morning wood and bus vibrations and being 15 years old, I never didn't have a boner. And I, yeah, I for sure. I wish somebody had blown me. At times, I was forced to satisfy myself. Yeah, that's fucking gross as hell. That story, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next contestant. Okay, Tara. So, am I a slut? So, um, I broke up with a shitty ex-boyfriend of mine and to get back at him I slept with two of his co-workers but they were also his friends outside of work which resulted in him quitting a six-figure year job wait I'm embarrassed wait he quit because he knew that some of the people that worked there slept with you he was a little bitch yeah what? I know yeah, is real. that not really his problem like you could have stayed there it's it's not I that mean, big. I like, think they were friends outside of work too, but he just quit out of embarrassment, I guess. I don't know. He was shitty, so I didn't feel bad. He was a dickhead, this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah, big time. Well, let me ask you something. Do you think that there's any scenario where you would have slept with either or both of these guys if they hadn't had the connection to your ex? Yes. Oh. Well, then you're totally a slut. Yeah, you're such a whore. <laughs> Ow! Look out! <laughs> I thought you were using sex as a weapon. Turns out you're just easy. Yeah, you're just a cock hungry whore. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I didn't, it's an old saying that I got to get rid of. I'm sorry. But yeah, congratulations to those two work colleagues, huh? Because man, I, you know, I don't want to be a part of payback sex. But if it's with one of these two, I'm not saying no. Yeah, I, I disagree with you guys. I, I, I give you a thumbs up. I say you're in the clear. Oh. Hey, yeah, Kevin. really? We got a split panel. Yep. Well, wait a minute. That means one more decide. You're the decider, Michael. Yeah, that's a pretty slutty thing to do. Yeah, you're back on the slut list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am a and I can tell that doesn't bother you, so that's great. <laughs> yeah. Look, we all have our time in the sun, and now you've grown up and you're not such a floozy. You probably wouldn't suck anybody off in public transport. You already said that. Yeah. And if there's another mishap, you're probably not going to go down and train your work colleagues. It's. it's it's been done. You know, Mike Tyson once said that he would eat somebody's babies. I don't think he's like it would eat a baby now. No, I think he's. I think he's grown. That's that's all I'm saying. We've all grown here. Yeah, he, think... he only eats adults now. Right, and they had it coming. They were asking for it. <laughs> so I, I think you're in the clear, and uh, we really appreciate you calling in and and hel- and helping us. Yes. Yeah, you ladies are OG fans, right? Yes, we are. Yeah, big time, like ten years. Yeah, we're no gonna. Shit. I'm actually gonna hire them to do. They're gonna do bits for uh, games for us to play. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, mm-hmm. we got some planned. Yeah, we have some stuff put together. Yeah, nice. and then when we do Alice Mania, you should come and have your show. We'll be on your show. That's about us. Yeah, I was Just- actually gonna buy her Alice Mania tickets for her wedding last year, but COVID. Yeah, that was right. Such a disappointment. But we will, you know, you're you're married. You don't, you didn't, didn't, they didn't stop you from getting married. So congratulations on that. And Alice Mania will be back, and we will all be there, and we will all celebrate and rejoice even more than we ever would have, because I think a lot of us thought that that was probably the end of it. But I, I, it is not anywhere near the end. There's going to be a fucking giant one coming soon. Yeah, Very we'll see exciting. you there. Just keep it in your pants, you two. Yeah, yeah. Don't get too loose until the event starts, all right? Just back it down. <laughs> Pace yourselves. It's a bucket list trip, yeah, actually. Yeah, it is. What's that? It's a bucket list trip. We're excited. We've been wanting to go for, like, years. Oh, you guys are fucking awesome. I cannot wait to see your actual faces there and be like, look, look, other fans, some of us are hot. Can you believe it? <laughs> 
<laughs> Statistically you speaking, we knew it had to be true. We, <laughs> we knew we we knew at least two of you were out there. Yeah, there it we is. have the proof. Yeah, yeah, awesome stuff. All right, thanks for being on the show. Have a good day. See you next yeah, week, baby. Uh, All right. Yeah. Brooke wow. and Tara. Wow. All yeah, right. Delightful. Due to, yeah, due to my slight, off to a great start. See, people, you're not something you think it is. You know, where some girls are a little bit worried about things they might have done in the past. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just a, a group mentality would have judged them to be a bit of a slut. Here at the Jason Ellis Show, brutal and total honesty so that you can accept whatever happened and then move on with your lives. We your should whores. also point out this bit's been around for a very long time and the, the word slut didn't have such a sting to it back then. And uh, we never thought of it as a bad thing. Well, like, I think now the, case- the likes of like Amber Rose have reclaimed the word and have made it a compliment. Yep, and I that's where I'm at. I reckon yep. it is a compliment. I, my wife is a slut. Yep. And I'm super into it. What's up? Yep, I love Amber Rose. Huge slut. <laughs> Big fan. Hey, thing. yo! Is she a hoe? My mother thinks that I'm a slut. Caught with too much up my butt. I love the taste of straight up nut. Dude, is she a slut? All right, we have yeah. a recording from somebody who looks... Like my style, I get down with this. Yeah. Oh, oh she's you a know slut. What? I need your. Uh, I need the thingy. Oh, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This person looks very familiar. Yeah. E-e-e. There we go. Here we go. Next question. All right. Here's my story. Believe it or not, could be true, could be fake. I'll never tell. One night, I'd gotten off work at the strip club, and I was. Just crazy horny for no reason. Happens sometimes. And, um... Can you pause there it? There was nobody fuck. Um... Her tits are awesome. I know. Have they changed? Right? Has she taken advantage of being in seclusion to... There's no way she had a thing done. Really? Is she doing the trick that I do after I do a bunch of push-ups and I try to make my pecs look bigger? And I go like this? Wait. You do a thing at home by yourself where you try to make your pecs look bigger? Oh, yeah. I'm pathetic. Wait. You you do a thing where you push your titties and then look at yourself? Yeah. Like after I do a bunch of push-ups and my oh, chest okay. gets a little bit bigger? Yeah, you're getting obsessed with not having bitch tits. This is a good thing. Be yeah. proud of looking at your stupid tits. So when I, if I put my arms together yeah. like this, yeah. it's like, ooh, I look like I just did a thousand push-ups right yeah. there. Good for you. Yeah. But she is... God. Malice. Malice rules. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to go back to her, her story? Yeah, yeah. This is hard to hear. It. There was nobody fuckable at the club. So Must be nice. I gave up hope. I went to a burrito cart, decided to, <laughs> you know, fill the void with food instead. And um, I get there and I look over and there's this, like, tour bus. And out of the tour bus comes this flock of, like, snowboarder, surfer type dudes <laughs> and their manager. And they're, like, foreign or whatever. And he comes out and he's like, hey you and he points at me and i'm like the only girl for miles he's like it's our friend's birthday and i don't know what response they expected but i gave them the response they needed i was like well he should get a birthday dance right now and they were like oh oh yeah like where do you have a place i was like no 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 i don't have a place for i don't know seven dudes or however many it was um (laughs) they knew a girl and they said we could go to her house. So we all go to this girl's house. I give this guy a lab dance. And yes, I go have sex with him in the bathroom. And I did it all for free. Because, like I said, I was very, very horny. Is that slutty? Or is it a gift? <laughs> wow. I don't know. Um, but I had a great time. Oh. Um, fucking surfer, after, snowboarder, motherfucker. The story's not even over, though. <laughs> it's after not? After having sex with the birthday boy, um, I came out with the rest of the group of guys and was explaining to them, you know, stories about stuff. They were, you know, talking shit about his sex game and whatever. And I was like, no, no, he was really good. Almost made me squirt and this and this and this. And they were just <laughs> like, wait, what? Squirt? And all this stuff, we started talking about squirting. Oh, then... We had to do a demonstration. No. I said squirting is super easy. Like anyone can learn how to make a girl squirt, I think. I mean, I learned how from watching Nina Hartley's Guide to Squirting. And um, so I proceeded to show the group of guys with an assistant or possibly two, maybe more. 
really don't remember because I was in a, what I call a, a sober, but a intoxicated horny state, which has happened to me a few times in my life where I almost like am so horny that I black out because I can't contain it. It's wow. like wild animal shit. Anyways. So I think there was a bit of a finger bang, gang bang that happened. Oh. <laughs> and, um, attempts were made at making me squirt. No squirting, I think, really occurred because they were slow learners. But um, I would say needless to say, but everything in the story needs to be said. Uh, after that, after I had that, to go home. I think. I mean, I didn't think it'd probably be, you know. A place I should stay but um I was uh two of the boys needed a ride home and then I might have had sex with them too what I don't know I feel like I was making up for lost time you know I had gone maybe a year or nine months without oh, having sex and um I was you know <laughs> like I said I was young and I had just gotten sober you know how that is just wild animal shit. And so I might have had sex with a lot of people in one night. But, um, yeah. I mean, I have no regrets. And it was probably one of my favorite sexcapades I ever had in my life. Sweet. So, wow. Who knows? Maybe it was all a fantasy. Maybe I dreamt it. I don't know. <laughs> nice. You decide for yourself. Fuck. Man. Those guys got so lucky. Yeah. I want to go to a finger bang gang bang. Yeah, right? I never <laughs> even knew that there was a... I would feel bad about being in the room of a finger bang gang. I'd be like, man, are you sure we should be doing this, you guys? Are you sure that you need that many fingers around there? Yeah, I thought finger bang gang bang was just a band that played daytime at Warp Tour. Yeah, so those guys were great. I love that <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, I'd be a bit weird about my fingers going there with everybody else around. Up until the finger blasting thing, I was saying, yeah, you're in the clear. But just to have a group finger blast. Well, I mean, she said it, she was breaking a year-long cold streak. Yeah. She wanted to be a wild animal. So, fuck yeah. I salute you, Malice. I you're not going to no. call anybody a whore on this. I, that one's going to be a slut, it's according to you. No, I don't think so. A lot of guys were fingering her in front of a bunch of, bunch of other people. Swedes. Kevin. Yeah. Is Surfers, it... snowboarders, <laughs> extreme finger bangs. And not to mention the manager guy, like he's creepy. <laughs> Surf manager guy. I don't trust that guy at nope, all. Nope. That guy always gets 10%. Yeah. Hey, right. she said she said she <laughs> How many fingers is that? <laughs> she said she remembers it fondly. Yeah. She was breaking yep. breaking a cold streak. Something was in her that night. She felt like being a wild animal. And, uh, yeah, I'm giving the thumbs up. Okay. I mean, you got to take into account she wasn't, like, going out with anybody. She was single. Yeah. So she's not, like, cheating on anybody. She didn't cheat on anybody. It was all consenting. Everybody sounds like they had fun. Yep. If you have no regrets and you didn't put yourself or other people in harm's way, then it's you can't really judge anything. So there you go. The open opinion of that one is you are not a slut. Would that not surprise you, ladies and gentlemen? You would have thought that might have been a bit of a, bit of a loose move, but not. Not here. I just want to know... Where and how the burrito worked into the evening. Yeah, I was like, was the burrito good? Oh, she ate the burrito. <laughs> when? Before she went to the people's house, for sure. But I thought she gave the guy a lap dance on the bus on the way to the house. Did she eat the burrito while she gave him a lap dance? A possibility. Did she give him a lap dance and then say, real quick, let me scarf down this burrito, then I'll fuck you? A uh, possibility. Okay. Was it in between the sex and the finger bang Wait, gang you think bang? she took the burrito into the bus? You think she scarfed it down before she got on? Yeah. Okay. Or do you think she just threw it out and said, "I have better things to do"? Burrito. I know Mel. She would never throw away a burrito. Well, that's true. She really likes burritos. Yeah. It's like one of her favorite things in life. I'm usually around when she wants the. Burrito, yeah. Not when she wants to <laughs> fuck the bus, which yeah. is a bummer, man. Because yeah. that, whenever that wild animal was mm -hmm. going, man, fuck, did I blow that day? Yeah. You go to bed too early. You got to stick around for score thirty. I've surfed. I snowboard. <laughs> I'm European. You're extreme. <laughs> hey, man. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, do we have another one? We do, yeah. Oh. Um, oh shit. Oh yeah, you're not plugged in it. Gotta play the intro, man. It's almost like we're not even doing the bit. No, oh, I know. That's what makes it official. Hey, yo! Is she a hoe? I let some brothers run a train. It only feels good when there's pain. All my clothes are semen stains. Dude, is she a slut? Goose bit. 
<laughs> go spit rigs. Here we go. Um, and we should also point out we threw this out for dudes too. It turns out dudes are just chicken shit. Yeah. Which is crazy because I recall that we used to always be overrun with dudes calling. Well, one time I totally fucked this chick, and then I totally fucked this other chick. My slut, bro. I yeah. think it's gonna. T- I think maybe this dude in my slut, when it comes out and we post it, might make people start calling the show for dude in my slut. But I think it's been such a long time that, that people, especially the podcast. I think if we did it on Patreon, there'd be a bunch of people calling in. Yeah. If you do it on uh, podcasting, the most of the people that listen to us n- didn't even know we had a show. This is a whole new thing we're talking to. Yeah. That's why I believe Malice is. We, we the, as far as every, but most of the people that are watching this on YouTube that we don't know her. Oh yeah, yeah, they don't even know she's friends with us. She does look like she's related to me though. <laughs> yeah, you look like you guys run in the same circle, right? Yeah, it's pretty fucking apparent, you know. <laughs> I'm like, man, if I haven't met her, where have I been hiding? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if more people want to submit questions, we can do this again in the future, dudes. Stop being chicken shits. Yeah. Once again, ladies, blazing the trail. Uh, do you want to move on to the next? Yeah, yeah. Next applicant. This is uh, Uni, I believe. Uni. Hi, my name's Uni. I'm new to the show. My husband turned me on to it. Yes. So I picked up this guy and took him home and used him and abused him for the night. And <laughs> the next morning, my two roommates escorted him out of the apartment and took him to the south side of town which is not a good side of town and kicked him out of the vehicle and told him he had to walk home (laughs) what a slut oh that's so great oh uni yeah that's crazy i think she's talking about chicago i once got mugged in the exact same fashion (laughs) in the same town did i was her roommates guys she didn't specify but um like again two, two guys escort you out of the house <laughs> or is it two because is that did she get did the guy get muscled out yeah i think her roommates might be charlie's angels <laughs> they're either tra- charlie's angels or like two big like brothers or italian brothers that have like baseball bats or something yeah they're like hey you gotta go got two options they'll whack you in <laughs> yeah, the bedroom you're gonna get whacked in the bedroom or you're gonna get <laughs> dropped off on the street eh? hold my pizza i gotta handle yeah. this hey <laughs> hold my hold my slice eh? no nah, she's not a slut she's gangster uh, yeah she, she's, she's affiliated <laughs> yeah she just wanted to get some booty miss mission accomplished yeah and it turns out her roommates are kind of buttholes what are the odds that that dude got mugged and died or one or the other he probably lived right Probably. Yeah, and he got some sweet tang beforehand. So what are you complaining about? <laughs> got all tanged up. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> covered in juice, baby. <laughs> okay, one more. I don't need to play the intro. No, we got one more submission. This is Shiloh. Yeah. Due to my slut, if I once got fucked on all fours with my head in a toilet <laughs> in a tattoo shop. And it was my idea. I was dating this tattoo artist for a long time, like years but he was dating a lot of different girls, so I wanted to be special so that he would like me more. So I was like, hey, why don't you fuck me with my head in the toilet? He's like, okay. So we did, and he flushed. And then we told everybody after, so to this day, even though it was like 15 years ago, I like still can't live it down. People still bring it up. Oh, we gotta man. be bringing up old shit. See, this yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, man, hasn't anybody had uh, their head flushed in a toilet while they're getting fucked? Like, you would if, come on. if it came... Did he, do it. Who Very, among us has not gotten a Rocco? <laughs> Very important question. Did he poop in it first? Oh, come on. That changes the answer. Well, that changes really? the answer. Really? You don't think she would have mentioned that she was forehead <laughs> to turd? Come on. I don't think she did any shit bobbing. She just... Yeah. And if, and if, you, fl- and if you flush it, doesn't a turd go down anyway? I'm just making jokes. You know what's... The most important thing about this particular call is hearing the girl say... That she thought that her putting her head in the toilet would make her special to the boy. Mm-hmm. Which tells me that, yes, we are doing a segment where we want girls to talk about how loose they got in their career of sex. And that is kind of a shitty thing. But there's got to be lessons here. And when it comes to you thinking that you need to do a sex move 
to make sure that your boyfriend or some guy that you want to be your boyfriend is going to like you more is not a good idea. Yeah, have sex for you, even not if, for him. Even if it means you're not going to call and tell us that you one time put your head in a toilet bowl <laughs> while somebody was fucking you and you told everybody and yeah. they kept calling you toilet bowl lady. Mm-hmm. You know, this this is a lesson to be learned. All the other girls from this girl who was, uh, uh, um, what is it, like, uh, cur- had enough courage to say something like this. Yeah. Let it be known all you other girls out there that think they might do something special for their boyfriend so that he will remember them. It's not that's not how that works. You do you put your head in the toilet and you let him flush it because you think it's horny. Yeah. Well, what about or this? What about this? It. Like, sure, getting your head stuffed stuffed in a toilet sounds kind of nasty. It is it is pretty nasty. I mean, Which I've, is worse? I've seen- getting fucked in with your head in the toilet or those girls that lick the toilet seat on YouTube. Getting your head in the toilet Really? I'd rather get fucked from behind with my head in the toilet than lick a toilet seat. No. Well, I gotta see I'll, the toilet. I'll lick the before toilet before I make any call on this. It's, it's a, a normal toilet. It's a tattoo parlor toilet. Yeah. Those those shits are nasty. But you would lick the you would lick lick the brim instead. Or my mouth and nose are submerged in the water that has like poo and piss flecks floating around in it. Probably no, it doesn't. If it's flushed, nah, stuff gets back. Stuff you know, t- there was a thing uh, that uh, fast food restaurants, the ice machines, the water was just was worse than the water in the toilet. That's pretty right. foul. Well, there was a thing. Some cleaner product had an ad campaign years and years ago where they're like, your kitchen counter is a thousand times more deadly than your toilet bowl and they kept on comparing things to toilet bowls and all of a sudden it came out it turns out your toilet bowl really doesn't harbor many germs at all that's why they can say that so it's more about what you feel like you're doing than it is about the actual risk that you're taking and how you know it's not as disgusting as it seems it just seems really disgusting i'm not a toilet bowl guy i don't want to put my head in the toilet bowl i don't want to drink toilet bowl water but if it's a flush toilet and you're flicking toilet bowl toilet bowl water at me, I'm not that offended. But I I really could not lick. It'd be very hard for me to lick the top of a toilet seat. Because nobody poops on the seat; they just place their butt cheeks on it. Pee stains and shit. You're gonna be joking me, pubes. Yeah. Ew, I cleaned fuck, two toilets dude. last night. It was not something yeah. I cared. I to baby eat. wipe my toilet from my own piss stains sometimes, and <laughs> as I'm doing it, I'm offended at myself <laughs> for being like, I'm like, oh, look at that dehydrated pee stain that you left on there. Wait, is that a fucking skid mark from a shot? Like you fucking, <laughs> you're so disgusting. <laughs> well, I'm let, assuming let, it's either me or my son. I don't know which one it is. My ass is so blown out. I just go, it's me. Kevin, let me ask you Fair something. Enough. If I imprisoned you in lactose, motherfucker. If I imprisoned you in like what do they call it, a water closet, like a room in a bathroom that's just the toilet. You know, when sometimes you're in like a hotel or something, and there's water a, closet. Isn't that what it is? You know, I've never heard this. Well, like I have a a bathroom where the toilet is in a little room inside the bathroom. So you walk in the it room. There's a door. Yeah, there's the shower oh, okay. and there's the bath and there's yeah. the and there's it's the sink. Called a what? I think it's I think that is a water closet. Eh, I did not know that. Like they call it the, the WC in the UK for a, a yeah bathroom. For a bathroom that's anyway. If thing. I if I imprison you in a room with just a toilet and there was no visible skid marks, but it was a toilet and you hadn't been able to clean it and you know that it wasn't like somebody cleaned it before I imprisoned you in there, you know the human body can't survive without water for very long yeah. at all. Do, oh, do I'm you drinking think, it for sure. Do you think you would make it 24 hours without drinking from the toilet? No, twenty four no hours, way, right? I would drink it in the first like six hours just to stay hydrated. I know I wouldn't make it forty eight hours. Wait, you're saying you cannot drink toilet water? I would prefer not to. Yeah, but I think I, you'd crack about, sooner than you think. Do you be- would you? Would, what about just ice from McDonald's? I mean, like you get a coke, right? That stat you just pointed out sounds gross. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, like it was a like some institute of fuck faces did a full on like. You know what I mean? Research on it. And it was like, this is the water that they've got. It makes sense to me. I've always thought, as a guy that tries to drink pure uh, water that's been purified, because, uh, you know, I drink a lot of water and I know that if I drink shit water, I just piss it out faster. So I try to do that or I try to add electrolytes to my water every now and then. Ice from my fridge. I know that I like my drink cold, but I know that uh, it's not probably as good as the water that is, that it, if I have purified water. And and then if I get it from McDonald's or Seven Eleven, then I know 
that that ice has got to be just like the... How do you get a 49-cent taco for the last 15 years? Because the shit is getting put other stuff in it that makes it cheaper. So to me, ice from McDonald's or 7-Eleven, it's just turds. I think I've got like little micro turds in it for sure. Animal turds, human yep. turd. I don't know. Well, it's shit. you know it's cheaper than water? Urine. What do you think they're making the ice out of? You know, without a cup, you could just do a handstand and piss <laughs> straight into your mouth and you would never die. Think about it. You're a human fountain. Did you know you can live off your own shit for a week? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a new bit. <laughs> I don't know just, how you I'll catch on, that, though. That's pretty hard. I'll go on the record and say I would not like to drink water out of a toilet or poop, ice, or piss ice. Pussy. Yeah, right. Yeah, more for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna survive. We're survivors eating urine cakes on top of the world while you're over there starving because you won't drink a little bit of shit. Jason, what do you choose? Let's just assume Kevin's apartment looks like what we think Kevin's apartment looks like. It's not perfect, it's not horrible. You can either have a glass of water from his toilet right now or you can lick the bowl. Oh, glass of water from Thank the toilet. Yeah. You. Yeah. you gotta be joking me. And that's like you probably kneeled over the toilet and jizzed in it to see it like an hour ago and i'm like fuck man yeah so we know you like so to blow gonna, up the death star and come on your own poop so you're gonna drink the cum water then huh here's the off, here's, based off of that theory well, if i see jizz in the bottom of the bowl i probably won't scoop that bit in <laughs> but i'm assuming i'm allowed to flush it what about this okay how about this scenario would here's you, the difference would i lick would the you? toilet seat of your house or would i drink some water from your toilet i would drink the water all so, right i i Knowing my toilet, I feel like I, you guys made the wrong decision. Why? How about I don't because I, I don't know. Uh, what about this? Would, would you would you think would you rather drink a cup of water scooped out of my toilet or just really quick lick one of my butt cheeks? <laughs> oh, I would oh. lick your butt cheek. I'll lick the butt. Yeah, it's mellow. So why are you bummed out by my toilet seat then? I just place my butt on the toilet seat. You're just because I butt. told you there's fucking if if you haven't cleaned it like t- like before I lick it yeah. then that means there's pee that bounced off mm-hmm. pee, and shit that bounced down. off. There's splatter, dude. There's fucking splatter. You don't on the you know top what? of it. That yes. tells me that his toilet is extra filthy because yeah. I can tell you and I clean toilets. Like I always yeah. every oh, time I piss I, I go oh man there's a piss stain I got to get that when I'm done pissing. Like and if there's other people's pee stains on there I got to get them. Let's get real when you clean a toilet. If it needs to be cleaned, like you didn't just clean it yesterday and for some weird reason you're doing it again, have you ever not needed to clean the bottom of the actual toilet seat? Right. There's fucking, what do you think there isn't splashing and splattering happening in there? Yeah. Grow up. I sit, That's ridiculous. I sit down to pee when I'm at home. I think the chance of your turds shooting out of the bowl and then splatting onto your ass cheeks and then your box of shorts not somehow getting most of it off. I just don't think you got shit on your butt cheek. I do think that there are particles of shit on your toilet seat. But not inside the bowl where the water lives. In the very water part? No, not as much. All right. Once again, we agree to do So you think somehow when I poop in the toilet, poop flies out of the toilet and goes between my butt cheeks and the seat <laughs> yeah, of the no, toilet. Yeah, I don't think. I know it does. All toilet seats have splatter. That's, yeah. If you don't clean a toilet for a certain amount of time and then you lift the seat... There's stains under there. Wait, are we talking about licking the top of the toilet seat or the underneath? The underneath. What do you mean the underneath? The fucking, what, the porcelain bowl. The rim. I thought we were talking about this seat. No. When we were talking about the toilet seat. No, we're talking about the porcelain bowl. Oh, I'd rather rather lick your seat than drink the water, but I'd rather drink the water than lick the rim. That's what I'm saying. To me, it's very obvious. Yeah. Mm. And okay. I'll lick your butt on top of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is my not official the, hierarchy. Not the hole. If we go hole, then we're like, oh, I'm going back to drinking toilet water. Ooh, but I'll okay, lick wait. your cheek, no problem. I'll do... Oh. Licking the hole. I might... I feel like that's the last one. I think I'd probably lick your toilet seat wow. brim before I lick your hole. I my think I got I think yeah. I gotta put hole okay. above rim. I think Hull's next to last. Look, I, here's what rims, I... Rims are so bad. Here's what I... Here's, what I, here's how I <laughs> really so feel. so depressing. I would rather lick your anus yeah. than lick your fucking rim of your toilet seat. But for the sake of your sanity, because <laughs> I don't want to... As a half gay, I don't want to fucking half gay lick your anus and think that somehow yeah. I've like... 
done some gay shit to you. With, right. Like I kind of gay raped you a little bit. I don't want to accidentally make make you love me. Yes. Thank Look. you, Michael. That's really what it is. Because <laughs> I really do lick a mean ass. <laughs> and I feel like if I do it, you're going to be like, Jace, you could probably try to kill Katie or something and try to be a power couple with me. And I can't have that, man. You two wanting to lick my butthole. We don't want to lick it. Doesn't make me feel gay. Oh, if I licked it your will. ass, you would feel gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Try to. I don't want to do it to you, but try yeah. to think about it right now. I don't, I'd be looking, looking back your, at you and be like, "Dude, you're being so gay right now." You would not look back at me. You would start <laughs> crying because yeah. the gay is seeping <laughs> in. Uh, you would be so miserable. Good luck talking to me through the throes of ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are nasty. It's been a great show. Oh, has it? Uh, I think it has. Fuck, I yeah. like doing the show. We should do longer shows or more of them or something. Well, hey, people, tell your friends. <laughs> more people that listen, the more yes. shows we can do. Yeah, and yeah. watch it on YouTube. You should have seen my kickflip, man. Under pressure. Yeah. Come on. And, and our Patreon. That's right. And you can follow us over for plenty more at uh, patreon.com slash ellismate. Two live shows per week. Yeah, two hour shows. Oftentimes longer. Thank you. Love you. Like and subscribe. Don't die. <laughs> Do 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 boom 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 bing boing 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 meow 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 Big fat Big fat Boing 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 Fucking boy! 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 Boy!